Welcome to DIS Today, coming to you live from New York City on this Tuesday morning. With many people starting school and going back to work today, we have a great show for you. Here with me now are Sabrina with sports and Isabella with weather. Sabrina? Thanks, Annie. Later on, we will be talking about a truly inspiring story about a woman's heroic swim. Sounds very interesting. Isabella? Well, after the rainy holiday weekend, weather in New York will finally be sunny with clear skies. Thanks, Isabella. In other news, yesterday President Obama met with the Republican Senators John McCain and Lindsey Graham regarding his push for military intervention in Syria. Obama is seeking support from Congress, and this meeting may be the first step towards his goal. McCain and Graham have previously expressed concerns that Obama's plans would consist of a random attack to punish the Syrian regime. However, after meeting with the president, they both feel more confident that the White House is developing a better strategy that would weaken the regime of President Bashar Assad and boost Syrian opposition forces. Obama's work does not end here. Today he will be meeting with chairs and ranking members from key national security committees to continue gaining support for his plan to invade Syria. In other news, Danish Radio has announced its decision to hold international music competition Eurovision in Copenhagen, Denmark next year. We have Maddie on the streets in UNSA live with the full story. Thanks, Annie. Eurovision is a large event where people from all over Europe come to compete in a singing competition. Last year, Eurovision was held in Malmo, Sweden, where Danish singer Emily de Forest had won the competition. Due to Forest's win, Denmark is now the host country for Eurovision of 2014. Danish Radio is also a sponsor for the event and has recently declared to host the event in the country's capital of Copenhagen. I got a chance to speak, to speak with people on the streets of, the, of Unsen and understand their controversial issue. How do you feel about Danish Radio's decision to host Eurovision in Copenhagen versus another city within the country? I'm bad for that because it's uh, tourism mm -hmm. for the first and it's, it's economical good for Denmark. Will you be attending Eurovision 2014 because it's being held in Copenhagen? It's the better is depend on where where location is. If it is in Uland, in Herning, maybe, maybe yes, I will. That Eurovision hasn't been held in Denmark since 2001. So how do you feel about it being held in 2014? I think it's going to be a, a big, big event that's going to attract a, a lot of people here. Um, and probably it would be better for the tu tourism um, from from the other European countries uh, to Denmark. Being 2001 all over again. Uh, would you like to see Eurovision be held in? I would like to see it held here uh, in in Odense. Also, I think it's uh, it's the center of Denmark uh, to be in the best thing for for the Danish people. I could also see uh, Aarhus as a as a it's a good town, it's a big city. And, and there you have it. Looks like people in the streets of Unsen feel pretty similar about the DR's decision to host Eurovision in Copenhagen in the spring of 2014. Now back to Annie in the studio. Thanks, Maddie, for an interesting update. And now here's Isabella with a New York weather update. Good morning, New York, and now for today's weather forecast. It is currently 82 degrees Fahrenheit, and widespread showers and thunderstorms will develop in mid-morning. It's partly cloudy and winds are light and variable um, with an 80% chance of rain. Today's high will be 82 degrees Fahrenheit with 40% chance of rain. There will be a humidity of 94% with winds moving northeast at 6 miles per hour. A push of colder, less humid air is heading for New York City and the northeast this Tuesday evening. Um, the temperature will cool down with a low of 80, 63 degrees Fahrenheit with a 10% chance of rain and partly cloudy skies. The push of the Canadian air will end the daily risk of showers and thunderstorms that, will experience during, that was experienced during Labor Day weekend. Tomorrow will be a beautiful sunny day with clear skies and a high of 83 degrees Fahrenheit with a 0% chance of precipitation with west-northwest winds moving at 9 miles per hour and a lower humidity at 53%. It will be mostly clear skies with only a 10% chance of rain at night and looking into the rest of the week. There will be bright sunshine and cool breezes in the high temperatures, generally in the high 70s and 80s. Um, so and make sure to enjoy the last week of sunshine as the summer draws to an end. And that's the weather for, in New York for today. Now back to you, Annie. 
Thanks, Isabella. Hope everyone is enjoying the sun. In today's finance news, the largest U.S. wireless carrier is now 100% American. In one of the most expensive acquisition deals ever, UK-based Vodafone said Monday that it's agreed to sell its 45% stake in Verizon Wireless to Verizon Communications for $130 billion in cash and stock. Once the transaction between Verizon CEO Lowell McAdam and Vodafone CEO Victoria Kaleo is completed, Verizon will wholly own the wireless unit, giving the company more flexibility and options to manage growth in the lucrative mobile data market. Verizon, a U.S. telecom giant that offers internet, TV, and phone service, owned 55% of Verizon Wireless and has wanted to buy the rest for years. But until now, it was never able to agree on a price with its U.K.-based partner. At $130 billion, the deal would be the third largest merger and acquisitions transaction ever and would boost worldwide telecom deals to $224.3 billion this year. With Verizon fully under its umbrella of operations, it can integrate the wired and wireless units more deeply. This allows them to bundle the bill and do more joint marketing. This is a win for both Verizon and Vodafone. Verizon now has full control, and Vodafone can take this $130 billion and enhance their company. Now here is Sabrina with today's sports update. All eyes were on long-distance swimmer Diana Nyad on Monday as she became the first person to complete the 110-mile-long swim from Cuba to Key West, Florida without the protection of a shark cage. Overcoming her previous battles with boat troubles, storms, and severe jellyfish stings, Nyad began her fifth and final attempt at swimming the treacherous Florida Strait. Her journey began on Saturday, August 31st, as she jumped from the Hemingway Marina seawall off of Havana, Cuba. Throughout the 53-hour swim, doctors who traveled alongside her were concerned with her slurred speech and breathing. However, as she took her final strokes into the shores of Key West, the 64-year-old American was able to muster up a simple message to supporters, stating, we should never, ever give up. You are never too old to chase your dreams. And with those words of wisdom, back to you, Annie. Thanks, Sabrina. In entertainment news, New York-based electronic music festival Electric Zoo was shut down following the deaths of two concert goers who had apparently overdosed on the drug MDMA, also known as Molly or Ecstasy. Although the festival promoter, Made Events, urged people to rest and stay hydrated, approximately six people were taken to the hospital because of drug-related problems. Due to these unfortunate incidents, Mayor Michael Bloomberg advised Made Events to cancel the third and final day of the festival. Anyone who bought a ticket for this day was fully refunded. This is certainly not the first incident of a drug overdose at a music festival. The House of Blues in Boston was temporarily closed last week due to a drug overdose during a Zed concert. The question is, will these types of music events continue to occur despite these tragic deaths? Mayor, Mayor Bloomberg stated, from Simon and Garfunkel to the Black Eyed Peas, concerts in parks and public spaces have been part of the fabric of New York City for decades. Let's just hope that future concert goers remember to keep their wits about them. And that concludes today's news. Join us tomorrow for an update on the latest news on the Syrian conflict, weather, and entertainment. Thanks for watching.